on this week's episode of Live Large. I've had to work for every little ounce of uh, muscle on my calves. What I can tell you is I know how to make them burn like crazy. So skinny guy savior, what is your overall approach to muscle building? Have you ever heard the statement, less is often more? Have you ever wondered what that meant? Well, I want to elaborate on that today. In this week of Live Large, we're going to talk about why hating and judging others is the most self-destructive habit in the world and how it only self-sabotages your own life. From a weak and scrawny skinny Vinny to 210 pounds of solid muscle, Vince Del Monte is now living large in and out of the gym, and so can you. Hey guys, I'm probably not the most qualified person to give advice on calves. It's one of those really, really um, stubborn body parts, at least it can be. And um, I've had to work for every little ounce of uh, muscle on my calves. What I can tell you is I know how to make them burn like crazy. And that's what I like to show you with the seated calf uh, press. So one of the keys here, I really like to keep my calf training simple. The first requirement is to get a big stretch at the bottom of the movement. I like to keep my hands on the calf so I can feel them and I like to come as high as I can. Sometimes I even use my hands to lift it a little to find that extra inch. The key is to get a stretch and just try and hold it for one or two seconds at the top. That'll ensure that you're using your calves properly. You can even kind of stand up a bit through the seat to help get that extra inch. The key with calves is just to be consistent and to uh, stick at it, stretch them out a lot, open up that fascia, create room to grow, and uh, just don't give up on calves. I haven't, so you shouldn't either. Welcome to Ask Vince. So skinny guy savior, what is your overall approach to muscle building? Yeah, I keep it simple and um, there's a couple key principles I focus on. One is, um, and we're speaking to beginners now, we're speaking to people that have never uh, had their first transformation, so we're speaking to the skinny vinnies out there who haven't packed on a good 20, 40 pounds um, in the first year, year and a half or so. And um, the first thing is to Give your program time to work. You know, a lot of people said, you know, Vince, you know, how did you gain muscle, uh, 41 pounds of muscle in six months, only working out four hours a week? And I think to myself, only? Four hours a week is not only. That's a lot of time when you factor that in over a six month period. I was consistent through the summer, through school, through work. I was consistent four hours a week for a whole six months. So, I wasn't surprised when I got results. You know, I worked for it. So, to give your program time to work and to um, focus on outdoing yourself from workout to workout. That was my simple philosophy. Every time I hit the gym, I try to do an extra rep, an extra pound. Um, I try to take an extra second off my recovery. So, there was always a degree of improvement. I learned this from my running days. You know, if you're not doing something different, you're not going to get something different. So, I gave my body a reason to change. And I went to the gym with positive intention towards doing that. I didn't just show up at the gym and hope that I uh, built muscle the next week. I knew specifically what I was trying to achieve before I got to the gym, and I trained with my final outcome in mind. I wanted to be 200 pounds and lean, so I trained like a guy who was 200 pounds and lean, and I ate and I slept and I lived like a guy who was 200 pounds and lean. I didn't think and act like 149 pounds skinny Vinny, so I already knew where I wanted to be, and I acted the part before I got there, and I think uh, that made a big difference. I mean, covered a co little more things than you asked me there. No, that's okay. That's a good answer. Thank you. I want to talk about a concept that's very, very powerful, and a lot of people have a hard time. Uh, not it, it makes sense. It's going to make complete sense, but have a hard time implementing and understanding and applying it because it's actually quite challenging. Have you ever heard the saying "more is not better"? I hate that saying because I'm one of those guys that would just rather go hard, hard, hard and just hopefully things work. But unfortunately, that goes against the way our bodies are designed. And um, it's one of the greatest challenges in trying to achieve fat loss, muscular development, and even optimizing other areas of your life. So the more is not better concept has been around for a while, 
First time I learned about it was through Arthur Jones, the inventor of Knotless, who was all into the all out sets for muscle growth and he introduced it to Mike Menser and a lot of top bodybuilders. The minimum effective dose is the minimum dose that is required to produce a specific result. Anything beyond that is considered wasteful and useless. So we can look at different things in life. So let's look at boiling water. Boiling water takes um, a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Anything over that just doesn't do anything. Boiled water is boiled water. If we look at how to get a suntan, uh, let's say your body requires 15 minutes before the melatonin uh, starts to change so that you produce a tan to protect your body from any further damage. The minimum effective dose is 15 minutes. So sitting in the sun for two hours is just wasteful, it's useless, and it's harmful to your body. Let's look at muscular growth. For most people, one all-out set of, let's just say, 15 repetitions at 50 pounds would spark that muscle into growth. It would trigger growth mechanisms and hormonal responses to create muscle growth. In terms of fat loss, for most people to see a gradual drop in fat, they simply need to be in a deficit of around 500 calories a day, just generic number, to create a fat drop of about one to two pounds a week. Once you start going into extremes and trying to force things against the body's natural um, state, that's when you freeze progress and that's when you can actually hit plateaus for weeks and even months. So again, this is a challenge for people because we want to go to extremes. We want to do uh, two hour workouts a day to get the results tomorrow, but that's not how it works. You need to understand the minimum effective dose is applied in all areas of life or else you're going to experience burnout and you can actually stall or break your progress. So again, with my contest prep, I'm really trying to take that to heart and you know, it's tempting to think, you know, I want to lose an extra four pounds this week, so I'm going to go to the gym two hours instead of one hour a day, but it's not, it doesn't work like that. Your body is designed to protect itself and if, um, you kind of just push that button, that's what it's kind of like. You have to understand, you just have to push that button, which is the minimum effective dose, the fat loss will naturally happen or the muscle growth will naturally happen. And that's what you're going to constantly struggle with in all areas of your life. You're going to want to throw the kitchen sink at everything. You're going to want to get overnight results. And that, again, just goes against the way our bodies are designed to progress. There certainly might be a time and place where you go all out and you push beyond your normal limits, which are in which would be considered extreme programs, which are done for very short periods of time that are uh, very unique to the whole year. But again, those are the um, those are the exception and not the rule. Just to wrap up, you know, I find that a lot of exercise programs out there, a lot of diets are kind of like sitting in the sun for two hours when your body only needs 15 minutes. You're going to end up freezing your results and your body is going to go into survival mode and it's going to end up storing fat. It's going to start stripping off muscle. It's going to start doing all the exact opposite things. So the key, the take home lesson here is to not complicate things. You need to understand the minimum effective dose is applied in all areas of your life and whenever you try to complicate things and do things that are not natural to your body, that's when you run into problems. So lastly, think about areas of your life that you may be guilty of the more is better principle. You might be, a tr you might be trying to go against your natural physiology or you might just be trying to go against something. You might be making things harder than they need to be by doing too much and you might need to do a little less to get better results. So look at the areas in your life and ask yourself, am I doing too much and not getting the results? If you are, then you're probably already figured out your answer and you need to take steps uh, backwards as counterintuitive that, as that might seem. It's probably the way to get the new results. In this week of Live Large, we're gonna talk about why hating and judging others is the most self-destructive habit in the world and how it only self-sabotages your own life. You know, the other day my friend was asking me, you know, Vince, how do you handle your online fitness business? You're always open to critique and criticism. You're always putting yourself out there and people are always hating on you. And um, I like to think not always, but certainly <laughs> to some degree that is true. And uh, I thought to myself, you know, I don't really deal with that. And I find that a lot of successful people in life, they don't even acknowledge that the haters exist because they're too busy changing lives, living the life of their dreams, helping others and uh, 
you know, using their God-given talents for the better. And, uh, you know, I find that that is so true. You know, people that are hating on other people and judging, really, it's just a reflection of how unhappy and how unsuccessful they are. And it's not a good use of their time. And if you've ever caught yourself hating or judging somebody, you're not serving anybody. You know, they don't even know that you're hating on them in the first place because they're busy off changing the world and achieving an amazing lifestyle. But, um, you know, you have to understand that when you hate on other people, you take away positive energy from your own life. And it really, really self-sabotages anything that you are, are uh, possible of uh, creating. I want to share a quick story. I heard this, uh, the, this uh, recent weekend at um, my church, our sermon was talking about a story and why uh, judging was so unhealthy, not even from a biblical standpoint. We're not even talking about that today. We all know that one day we'll all be judged for our actions. And uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that life is too short to worry about anybody else other than yourself. So from a practical standpoint, you know, judging and hating other people, it's so relative. So here's the story. This fellow from the audience went up to the pastor and at the end of the sermon he said, uh, you know, I noticed you live in a house valued at around $300,000. Um, that's basically where the conversation went. And the, the pastor was obviously taken aback and aside from the fact from the guy assessing his house at, an, at the wrong value, um, this fellow was judging the pastor based on the value of his house and he thought that he was a bad person and a greedy person for living in a house like that. And the pastor flipped the tables on this member and he said, well, you know, sir, what kind of house do you live in? And they, after a little bit of convo, they figured out that this fellow was living in a house that was valued at around $100,000. You see the problem? Unless you're living in a house that is worth zero dollars, judging and hating on people is, is completely irrelevant and it's so relative. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, you know, think about it. The guy that's living in a hundred thousand dollars house could be judged on by somebody living in a third world country who isn't living in a house, period. You hear what I'm saying? So there, again, life, there's no place for judging and hating on other people. And uh, you know, I hear this a lot with a lot of uneducated people in conversation. They, they complain about how much uh, professional athletes make. And you know, they ask, you know, why does a professional athlete sign multi-million dollar deals and make all this money and you know, a doctor or a police officer doesn't even make a quarter of that? And you know, it's a very fair question. It's a very, very good question. But um, you know, I've come kind of to the conclusion that those questions aren't even worth asking anymore because the fact of the matter is in the day and age we live in, nothing's going to change. This is where we live. The ship has sailed. And uh, you know, the fact is, is that I would rather look at somebody else's situation and be motivated by it to hustle and to improve my own life. Here's what I've discovered. The most successful people in life, they don't have any hate or dislike for other people. You know, they don't have room for that in their lives. And uh, successful people and hate-filled complainers, those two kind of things just don't go hand in hand. You know, it's funny, I hear a lot of people hating on the, uh, on the characters from the Jersey Shore, and really all they're doing is taking advantage of an opportunity was, that was handed to them. And I'm not saying that uh, the way that they're making themselves famous by making idiots of themselves is, is all right, but what I am saying is that they were handed an opportunity and they seized it. And you know, I'm asking you, if you were handed an opportunity, would you seize it? I see a lot of people complaining about how much uh, money that professional athletes made, but you know, if someone handed you multi -millions, millions of dollars to play your favorite sport, would you turn it down? I doubt it. So you know, a lot of people, that you're hating on or that you're judging are probably just taking advantage of opportunities that they have and I guarantee you that you have opportunities in your own life that you're missing out on because you're worried about other people. So the point of today is to stop wasting your energy on judging and hating. It's such a relative thing. It just only sabotages your own success in life. And uh, focus on what you have in front of you that you can seize and take advantage of and use to serve and help other people. So. Uh, I hope that helps and uh, you know, keep hustling and uh, stop hating. So I'm going to say this one more time before we land this plane. Instead of hating on people, instead of judging others, use those people as a form of motivation to inspire yourself to work harder and go after what you want. If you don't like what you're getting in life, 
then take it upon yourself to own it, to man up, and to do something about it. And take responsibility until you get what you feel like you deserve. Until then, stop hating, keep hustling, keep working hard, and go after your dreams. It's worth it. On next week's episode of Live Large. Shoulders can take a lot of exhaustion. We are gonna do some front to back Arnold presses. Vince, what are your goals for this year? You know, we've done 15 weeks of training, so let's go out there and have some fun. Testing, one, two. Guys, this is insane. This is uh, Live Large TV. We are here with Tony Horton. He needs no introduction. The creator of P90X. Experience Live Large with Vince Del Monte next Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on YouTube. Click subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Don't forget to show some love and click the like and share button.